I am often asked how I create uh, my bright, cheerful paintings of animals. Uh, and to be quite frank with you, I don't really know. So I thought it might be quite useful to do a demonstration and, and just talk through how I go about doing what I do. Um, so here it goes. This is a sketch that I've recently done of a hippo that I saw at the zoo when I was visiting there with my daughter. And I'm just going to have a little go at colouring it in. Uh, what I've done is outline the basic sketch using a black Sharpie with a fine point. Um, I specifically use Sharpies because they don't run if you use watercolours over the top. Um, and now I'm going to, well, just see how it goes. I've loaded up a round sable brush with a mid-strength ultramarine colour and I'm using that to pick out the upper areas of my hippo's face. I'm making sure that I don't go outside the black lines um, and as I move away from the lines I'm actually blending the colour so that it becomes weaker, fading into the rest of the face. Now I've washed off all the ultramarine and loaded the brush with quite a bright purple, but it's quite a dark purple. And I'm planning to pick out those areas of the face that are in more of a shadow uh, than the blue. I'm about to make a bit of a mistake here because I go back in with the dark ultramarine uh, with a very strong version of it and try and pop that in the bit of the hippo that shows behind the head. Um, but I've used far too wide a brush and far too much water in the paint and it just looks messy. So I end up carefully blotting that off uh, and then lifting as much of that dark blue away as I can with a fresh brush with more clean water on it. Uh, and I'm planning to let that dry and then fix it later. To get my confidence back, I switch to a smaller brush, go back into the ultramarine and paint the tip of the ear. Uh, and then I'm going to wash my brush and switch to um, a very light salmony pink colour uh, that I'm going to use for the majority of the muzzle making sure that I use uh, quite a lot of water to blend it up and into some of that purple. I'm also going to make sure it gets more intensely pink and darker as it moves down and around that muzzle into more of a shaded area. Uh, and then I'm going to pick up the side of the cheek. Back to the ultramarine now and down the side of my hippo. Uh, it's a much stronger version of the ultramarine and I've got my confidence back now and I'm using a small enough brush and not too much water to then try and put in that little bit at the back behind the head again. Then moving on down into the folds under the chest. A touch of grey for the inside of the nostrils and also the inner section of the ear. Now back to those folds under the chest area with some very intense ultramarine blue um, and then going on down the legs. Now this area of the hippo is underneath the hippo and therefore in more shadow which is why I'm using much stronger colour. I've switched to a more turquoise blue for the back legs because I want them to be uh, obviously different from the front legs. However, I'm not quite sure that this actually works. So what I'm going to do is let it dry and then rethink that particular colour and, and try something else. 
The next step is to add a little bit of that um, lovely salmon pink and also the deep purple to the legs as well so that they're obviously all part of the same animal. With a narrower brush and a more intense version of that dark purple, I'm now going to go back in and around the eyes and down elements of the face to put a little bit more characteristic wrinkles in. Uh, the Pygmy Hippo does have a very wrinkly face um, and it is important to get that sort of definition into uh, the, the colour that I'm putting on. A bit more definition in the nostrils and the ears and around the nostrils um, on the face with a little bit more of a dark grey. I'm just adding a little bit of magenta to the face again to add another little bit of definition. Now it's time to try and correct those back legs and I've searched on the palette for the darkest blue I can find. I don't know what it's called but it's very dark uh, and I'm just going to paint over that uh, turquoise um, and I think this is going to work. Yes I like that, that's going to that's gonna work perfectly. Um, and I'm even going to put a little bit of that dark blue into the ear at this point before moving on to the eyes because it's now time to put um, a little bit more colour into those lovely big eyes. What I want here is a really rich brown so it's more of a sort of a, a rusty brown um, but I've got quite a, an intense amount of that loaded onto a very narrow bristle brush and I'm just going to sweep that around the iris of my lovely hippo. Just for a bit of fun I've decided to add a little bit more of that gorgeous magenta colour and put it on my hippo's toenails. All that remains now is to put a little bit of sap green under my hippo and some shadows um, just to ground him into the picture. Now I've really enjoyed doing that but I'm sure you can tell that I was completely making it all up as I was going along. Um, so there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to how I paint these pictures. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed watching. I certainly enjoyed putting this demo together. Uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Take care.